Uh, hi, Mark. How are you doing? Doing well, Kyle. How about you? Good. Thanks for taking the time uh, to provide us with some more information about the reference design you've been working on. Yep, no problem. You know, I recently just saw that Silicon Labs released the rechargeable battery pack reference design for USB Type-C applications. And I know you, you're working on a few more. Uh, which customers or podcast listeners uh, would be interested in evaluating these designs? So the name is pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, the makers of rechargeable battery packs. You know, a lot of people, you walk to the airport, they all have a portable battery pack to charge their cell phone. Well, as cell phones like Samsung and Apple start migrating to Type-C, these battery packs are going to need a Type-C port. And so engineers at, you know, Anker and these other battery pack companies are looking at Type-C solutions. Um, or anyone that wants to take advantage of the new power possibilities of USB Type-C would be very interested in these reference designs. Since Type-C can go to 100 watts, um, there's some special functions that need to be taken care of in the system, and that's what we provide. Oh, okay, so these designs are not, let's be clear, they're not targeting the USB data path, but rather they're um, focused on the power management part of the USB Type-C specification? Yeah, so the USB Type-C specification um, breaks out this power negotiation separately from USB data. So you can have your full speed USB data or your high speed USB data, and that's completely separate from this uh, power management specification. And we really focus on the power management side. We can control some of the data paths for the USB data, but we don't incorporate um, a USB physical layer in our solution. Is this a complete reference design? I mean, what exactly will the customers and the engineers receive if they uh, purchase this from Silicon Labs? Yeah, so the reference design that just came out and the ones we're working on um, are complete. So we provide the actual hardware. They can get that uh, from their local salesperson or online through the catalog distributors. We provide the bomb, um, the schematic, uh, any cables needed. But we also provide software and certification. So our solution is a microcontroller integrated with this uh, power negotiation physical layer. And so it comes with a stack that runs on the MCU, and that's all available. And we have example code. Uh, we have you know working code on the reference design that can be used as is, or you can go and modify the code. So we provide everything to be used as is, or you can slightly tailor it to your design. Okay, and what you mentioned the microcontrollers. What are the actual devices, if, if the engineers wanted to look it up, what, what devices does Silicon Labs use for this reference design? So we're using our 8051-based 8-bit BusyB3 or BB3, and the couple devices that are available for this are the QFN32 packages with 64K of flash. And it comes in commercial grade, industrial grade, and automotive grade. So there's different variations of um, basically the one part configuration. Okay, so you give them a complete reference design. Uh, you're using a pretty reliable family that's been around for a, a long time uh, and is easy to use. But can you maybe detail the top three reasons that you've either had customers tell you they like the reference design or that you think engineers will really uh, appreciate when they look at the Silicon Labs uh, USB Type-C solution? Okay, Kyle, yeah, I can give you three reasons. The first, and probably the best, is the additional compute power that you get right next to this power negotiation phi. So what Silicon Labs has done is integrate an MCU and a power delivery controller, which is the actual device that negotiates how much power is going to be sent over the Type-C lines. And so having the MCU there, you're able to control the PD controller and also do other things in the system. So you can make decisions based on what you see on the Type-C port. You can monitor other non-Type-C ports. Maybe you wanted to detect if an HDMI was plugged in or another Type-A port next to it. You can also control buttons or switches, sense things in the environment, and change your uh, power delivery scheme based on that, or just do other system manager tasks. So I would say that is the most important thing. We are not just a standalone power delivery controller. There are plenty of those on the market for really uh, low prices. However, we integrated an MCU and a power delivery controller. So we can do compute uh, tasks in the system as well as uh, control the Type-C port power negotiations. 
The second thing is, like I said before, uh, we come in multiple temperature grades, uh, up to 125, uh, and even automotive qualification. We're finding that uh, some of the customers who are sending a lot of power, like 100 watts, generates quite a bit of heat. Um, but some are only sending 30 watts. You don't need uh, the higher temperature grades. So we, we offer a big scalable temperature grade variant in case you have a tight enclosure or you're really not sending that much power depending on what you need. And finally, third reason, we are using an 8051 8-bit MCU next door PD controller. So it's a very cost optimized solution. Um, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck here. That's just the nature of 8-bit. So you get a really powerful 50 megahertz, 64K flash MCU uh, right next to your PD controller in a single small 4x4 millimeter chip. So once they, you know, they've looked at these uh, reasons and they start to evaluate the board. I mean, what? How do they get started? I'm thinking there's probably some software that they're going to have to get involved with. Uh, what's what's sort of the getting started steps for the engineers? Okay, yeah. Since you know we offer an MCU that's fully programmable, um, we open up everything to the customer. They can use our Simplicity Studio tool, which is our free. Um, kind of all-in-one tool. It's got all the device support, documentation, as well as a free IDE within it. And so you can take the boards or you can take the chip in a socket, pull it up in Simplicity Studio and load the example code or load the power delivery stack and then use it as is. You could just generate the hex file and you know go to production with that. Or you could actually look at the code and do some of those system monitoring tasks specific to your application. Well, thanks for taking the time, Mark. Uh, this is helpful for me. I know we, we spoke a little bit more about it, but uh, I think you captured the, the interesting things that uh, the customers will like and that uh, if they take more time to look into, they'll, they'll really appreciate this solution. Uh, is there anywhere that you suggest the customers visit to get more information? Is there a short URL or additional resources that you put together for, for customers? Yeah, we have a USB Type-C kind of web page tree I believe it's just scilabs.com slash USB dash type dash C. And that can dive into all the reference designs. It dives into the PD controller. There's a white paper you can read. And then we also have uh, downloads for Studio, Simplicity Studio, our tool online. And then there's also the software documentation available online as well that covers the PD stack and uh, how to best utilize that. Great. All right, Mark. Well, thanks again, and hopefully everyone enjoyed uh, the information you shared, and they can visit the URLs you, you just mentioned to get more information. Okay, awesome. Kyle, thanks for reaching out to me. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Mark.